Let's talk about the hypothalamus. What is the hypothalamus? Well, it only represents 1% of your entire brain, but it's one of the most active parts of your brain. It's half gland and half nervous system. It's half endocrine system and half autonomic nervous system. The endocrine system makes actual hormones as its communication, and then the autonomic nervous system uses neurotransmitters as its communication. And this includes both the flight or fight sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic or rest and digest. You can kind of look at the autonomic nervous system as not necessarily an on-off switch, but a dimmer switch, because so it turns up gradually certain functions and turns them down, like in blood pressure, right? You just kind of go up a little bit or, or come back down. And so the hypothalamus controls a lot of things. Urination, appetite, temperature, stress, reproduction, fluid, salt, glucose levels, sleep cycles, metabolism, smell, blood pressure, thirst, growth, and sex. So the hypothalamus really is all about homeostasis because here you have all these sensors on the surface of your body. You have sensors in your blood vessels to measure blood pressure. So you have these little uh, sensors in your tongue that will tell the rest of the digestion what's coming down to be able to prepare for that. Enzymes, acids, bile salts, things like that. You have also sensors in your in your cells to monitor how much fluid that you need inside and outside. So there's a lot of this sensory information going into the body, and then it's causing this gland to make adjustments. So basically, this gland is part of homeostasis. It's like a thermostat that either increases or decreases the function, but the overall goal is to keep things at a constant. Okay, so it's all about balance. It's all about energy balance. And when I'm talking about that balance, I'm talking about you know, your temperature being 98.6. Also, there's certain amounts of electrolytes inside and outside the cell. Your glucose should be at a certain constant level. You should sleep for a period of time. Blood pressure, 180 over 60. So the goal of the hypothalamus is to respond to sensory information that's coming in from the environment to make adjustments to the entire body and adapt to what's happening out here for the goal of creating homeostasis or balance. So let's say it's hot outside, right? Your body's gonna start sweating to adapt to that temperature so we're not overheated, so we can do a cool down. Like let's say, for example, we're gonna run up a hill. Well, we need to quickly increase the blood pressure to make sure that we have oxygen up to our brain because if our blood pressure doesn't go up, there's not enough oxygen to, to run to our certain parts of our body and will collapse. And so the hypothalamus is really a mini computer and it sends its information down to the pituitary, out to other glands, and that's the endocrine system, as well as through the autonomic nervous system. Now, what's interesting about the hypothalamus is that you can develop inflammation in the hypothalamus. And that comes from what they call overnutrition. I like the word overnutrition. You have too much nutrition, too many calories. I don't know why they're calling it overnutrition, when in fact those calories are probably too many carbohydrate calories. That's kind of a weird name for overnutrition, too many carbohydrates, right? Because if you have overnutrition, you get obese. And you develop something called metabolic syndrome. That comes from inflammation. So too many carbohydrates will cause the hypothalamus to become inflamed and then cause you to get metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure, a slower metabolism, you get a gut, you start retaining fluid, your glucose starts going up, you get sleep apnea, you become a pre-diabetic, so you're gonna be thirsty all the time, right? You're gonna urinate excessively, especially five or six times a night, you're gonna be always hungry. You have a decrease in testosterone, which lowers your sex drive. You lose your growth hormone, which is your fat burning hormone. And you may find that your metabolic set point is too high. So let's say for example, um, 
you're trying to lose weight and you just cannot get down below 180. Your goal is to get down to 130, but your set point is 180 and your body just fights it. This is exactly where your body is going to stay. And if you try to get below that, your body's gonna fight it. So your set point really is all about having this right here, the metabolic syndrome. And that, it really is high levels of insulin. And what's really behind that is insulin resistance. So how do you get rid of this right here? You get rid of inflammation. You simply stop consuming the excessive amount of carbohydrates. You get on a healthy keto plan. You do intermittent fasting. You start to lose weight. You reverse this. And then things start becoming back into balance. So by getting on the right diet, you can create huge effects, not just on your endocrine system, but the autonomic nervous system. And the hypothalamus is simply a combination of both of those systems. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.